welcome to the engineering room. We publish these conversations with people that are influential in our industry at the end of every month on the Continuous Delivery channel. So do subscribe if you enjoy the content. Uh, and if you like it, hit like as well. Uh, and do join the conversation in the chat below the video as well. The Engineering Room series is sponsored by Equal Experts, and I'd like to thank them for their ongoing support. So if you'd like some help building some great software or are interested in finding a great place to work, do check their links in the description below too. If you enjoy our content on this channel, consider supporting our work yourself by joining our software engineering community over at Patreon. My guest today is engineering manager of developer relations at Honeycomb. She's a semaphicist in the medium of code. She describes this as seeing development teams as learning systems made of people and of the software that they build. If we make that software teach us what's happening, it's better. It's a better teammate. And if this process makes us into system thinkers, we can be, we can be better people in the world. I'd add something else. She also is someone who seems to me to clearly love software in all of its complexity and in all of the complexity of its socio-technical setting. So welcome to the engineering room, Jessica Kerr. Thank you, Dave. I'm so glad for you. I'm so happy to see you. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Um, I think we, we were chatting a little bit about some of this before we started actually recording. Uh, I, I can't think some... not. <laughs> we can't not. <laughs> We're all friends. I think some people see software as being simple. And I don't think that you're one of those people. I would say programming is simple. Yes. And in fact, that's that's why I got into this field at all was because in college I was studying physics uh, because it sounded hard. Uh, but but I'm, this is just a bachelor's degree. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm studying physics and we do like mechanics and we do electricity and magnetism. And then like toward the end of, of the four years, we get to like quantum mechanics and suddenly we can't predict anything with perfect certainty. Suddenly we, we have to do statistics everywhere and just guess. And it was like so unsatisfying. Meanwhile, it, uh, in my last couple of summers in college, I did an internship where I was programming um, I was programming an arc info, making maps. It was really cool. Uh, but the, the beauty of programming to me was that it was predictable, was that there was a reason for everything the computer did. And when it screwed it up, you could always find, uh, find what was unexpected in like, oh, I didn't think this command meant this. I thought it meant something else. And then you can resolve it. And, and uh, there's a reason for everything everything is going to execute in exactly one way. It was deterministic. It was a puzzle. Uh, programming, like writing uh, some code and running it on your machine um, is like that. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, I got older and now I love software because it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree with it. everything that you said, um, except... <laughs> oh goody! You, you said before that we were looking for something to do, to disagree on. This isn't really a disagreement, I don't think. <laughs> but as it, I, I am a, I'm, one of my hobbies is being interested in physics. So, so I study physics as a hobbyist and um, learning about uh, quantum theory. I'm loving it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now I go back, and that's fantastic. And the part where the part where at the root you drill down, even even if you take the most reductionist view of the universe and you get down to the elementary particles you still don't have certainty yeah 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 and and the the, the mind-blowing ideas like like the, the everett interpretation and so on where we've got this multiverse of of different possibilities and we're just selecting which fragment of the multi you know the versions of the multiverse that we're looking at at any given point given an experiment oh sorry that's that's a sidebar we should <laughs> ooh, we ooh. shouldn't go there too much can I'll i recommend a book that. real quick yeah yeah so for physics, there's this gorgeous book. It's by Amanda Geffner, and it's called Trespassing on Einstein's Lawn. Cool. And, and it's her story of how she went into science journalism because of a fascination with cosmology, with physics at the, yeah. like, where did the universe come from kind of thing. Um, and talked to all these uh, prominent physicists and how she's come to understand where the universe comes from and all of this weird quantum stuff. It's it's a great book. 
highly recommend. I, I, that's that's great. I, I I will look it up. Thank you, and it, and I'll try and remember to put a link to it in the in the description uh, uh, afterwards. The, the, uh, so 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 we we we're both we're both now that we've grown up a little bit, me more than you, but we're, we're both complexity geeks, and mm. that's one of the allures. But but the other thing that you said that, that I think is really really important is that actually you know software is in many ways simple it, it is it is much more deterministic than many of the things that we deal with there's a scope at but which is deterministic there's a there's a scope at which it is and that's one of the things that i'd like to talk more about because I, I i think that's that's an interesting idea and in terms right, of right, that's where uh, functional programming comes in is how how wide can we make that scope of determinism yes and and, and i i would say i would say the same for test driven development i would say mm. that if you want test driven development to be effective you want your you want the same result every time you run the test that means so that, that within the scope of the test, it drives you to make the code it, deterministic it, it drives you it, it applies like many other positive attributes of design from my point of view it applies a pressure on the code to be better um yeah 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 and in this case by better we mean more predictable because yes. one of the places we we introduce uh avoidable complexity uh, in our software is by making database calls in the middle of something yes i remember i remember testing a check password function one time that updated the database Yes, <laughs> because if you check the same password three times or the password for the same person, it would flag your account as locked. Yes, yes. I, I, I don't expect that from a true <laughs> false returning. Is this a valid it, password function? It's, yeah. it's, it's, I, 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 I spent some time working with, with, with uh, a good friend of mine, Martin Thompson. Uh, and I, I'm Martin, Martin is, I, I think he's one of the best programmers around. I think he's mm. fantastic fantastically good programmer but one of the things that that i learned profoundly from working closely with martin over uh, over a lot of years is a laser focus on separation of concerns as soon as martin sees any part of his code that he realizes he's doing two things he's pulling it apart so that each part of the code is focused on doing one thing at a time such as uh, checking whether their password is valid is very different from locking an account after yes. counting the password checks and locking an account. Yeah. Yes. Uh, or, or, or as you said, you know, the, 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 the huge, you know, jump in, in different levels of thinking that's involved with what's valid about a password and I'm storing it in a database. Mm. Those are, those are entirely different. So, so I think both of those are examples, but, you know, there's, there's a matter of cohesion in terms of what's passwordness and all that kind of stuff as well. But but certainly that the the, the other thing I, I, I the other thing that kind of this ring this part this conversation rings a bell with me is that I I, I chatted on on the engineering room with with Michael Feathers and one of the things that he said was that good OO programming ends up looking quite a lot like functional programming and i think for the same reasons the reasons that you just pulled out it's that idea of trying to get to more deterministic systems i can see that you're you're wincing and you're not you, you're not sure you're yeah well that. you use the word good yeah what is good programming there there are many different um value scales yeah uh, so, but, so 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 but, I, but I, I i agree with you i would consider it good yes. if um if any like influence of the world, the database, any updates it makes is explicitly called out and separated. Yes. Because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how you get determinism is by extracting those bits and making them really explicit and yes. passed in and, or passed out. Yeah. And and, and I, I think we're in complete agreement there. Is it, it, so, so I, I we Let's come back to the good thing a bit later on, because I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get too side, sidetracked from from what we're talking about right now. But but I, I think that's an interesting theme because I I think that there might be, I think there are some things that we could probably agree on that there were hallmarks of good software, mm -hmm. even if it's very hard to de describe software in general as good or bad. Right, right. Because really, there there's no good except suited to the the context and the situation. I um, I I think there are some technical properties that we would prefer. 
that we would oh yes with. yes there, there are some technical properties that are preferable in anything except maybe a proof of concept concept oh no i shouldn't use the phrase proof of concept um in developer relations i actually get to write like garbage code like my objective <laughs> is to, can i translate this this png image into pixel art in a heat map um okay and and finding out whether i can do that i don't need to worry about any of the, the normal things but i then again i can't bring myself to say hey download the skip hub repository until i clean it up a little bit yeah 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 i i, I, th I think i think i think there's there's definitely a difference for kind of single use code mm -hmm. yeah. oh yeah yeah there's some code that you want to be bad because you like you don't want it to like look okay in a way that people could be tempted to put it into production yeah i i i i, I, I don't <laughs> I, I don't have that problem anymore, but but one one of the things that I've noticed is that I I am now so addicted to test driven development that I find mm. it quite hard to write code without, and that puts a certain cap on the quality or the bad the poor quality oh. that I can write. I, I, yeah, that I, there's I, only I did, certain kinds of code you can write. Yeah, that's true. I I, I did an exam I, I did an example for my book that was supposed to be intentionally bad. And I, 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 it's hard. I, I, yeah yeah i wanted to write some what i thought was really bad code and then point out all the reasons why i thought it was bad and then work on it a bit over time to refine it and pull out some ideas that that improved it and i started off the way that i always start writing code by writing some tests and i had to stop because i couldn't write the code bad enough to be able to show the things that i wanted to show it's much easier to fad and much easier to find bad code than to write it yeah, yeah, it is. It it, it is. It, it, it is. Um, the the other the, the uh, we've kind of gone down a slightly different route to where I thought we might uh, with my opening so remarks, but that's cool. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. But what, one of the one of the things that the other aspects of the complexity of coding that I certainly find inter interesting is I, I, I use I use the, the overly convoluted phrase maybe but the kind of socio dynamics of it the the, 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 the so it's a socio-technical practice we're doing mm -hmm. technical things mm -hmm. but it's a collaboration of human beings that are required to achieve that and that seems very very important to be able to do a good job and any, unless you are writing on small stuff on your own right right i think a lot of a lot of what we try to do in how do we organize our teams? How do we break the code into processes that the point of microservices is to try to get something small enough that it becomes a deterministic puzzle again? Yes. It, it becomes something a single person can work on without having to collaborate with others. That That's yes. a fantasy um, <laughs> because you just push uh, that complexity up into the social fabric and into the API calls where it's harder to see and harder to test. Um, uh, yeah, so so I agree with you. Um, there is no software without people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's a fascinating experiment at Twitter going on right now of how long can we keep this software running with most of the people gone? <laughs> it, maybe, it's, maybe it's longer than I expect. I could be wrong. Um, every circumstance is different. Uh, but uh, yes, like the the resilience of software, what keeps it working, what keeps it safe, uh, what keeps it growing in scale and uh, adapting to the increasing expectations of it is always people. Do, do you do you think that that change in in effect in in the life cycle of software from you know a a, a living, ongoing, evolving thing which is i think that how most of us would tend to think of it these days mm -hmm. to you know the more project focused worldview that certainly held sway for quite a long time which is we'll hire a development team they'll build this project then we'll roll right. them off and it will go into maintenance mode well you know uh, a lot of books and i read a lot of these well, I've written in like the 70s 80s 90s um they're writing software to move to to code stuff that was all people right that they're, they're, yeah. they're taking paper processes 
and moving them to software, yeah. which is a huge shift. But there is such a thing as new software yeah. there, right? There, there was like this, this gap of all the things in the world that hadn't been software yet. Um, and, and so there was like this quantity of code to write. Also, you didn't have a bunch of open source. You didn't have frameworks online everywhere. And, uh, and so a, a lot more of what you needed, you wrote yourself. Yeah. Um, so there was more of an idea of breaking things apart and writing a lot of software and we don't write that much code anymore. Um, relatively, uh, but now everything that needed to be moved to software is in software. And so the software that we're writing is either modifications of that, replacements of that. Um, that's a different rant. Um, or something entirely new. Yes. And the interesting part, of course, is this something entirely new. But, uh, but the point is, um, there is a lot more ongoing improving of software now because there's so much software in the world already. There's not this big gap where there's no software. Yes. No, I, 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 you've you've just voiced something that I've believed for a while, which is which is that we are in a very very different phase now. Mm -hmm. So in mm -hmm. in the early days, as mm -hmm. you say. You know, writing software was mostly translating human processes that were already in place into, you know, a computerized version of those processes. So you had experts that knew how that stuff worked mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. users that, that kind of had some view of what they wanted more clearly. These We've done that. We, we, yeah. we've, we've, yeah. we've done that to an extent. I, I, just in terms of the users knowing what they want. I, I remember... In the mid to late nineties, uh, one of my one of my friends working on a project, which was to introduce a Java-based system for um, a an old mainframe system mm. that just ran, oh, that's fun. ran the payroll kind of thing, and he'd got all of these. They'd got armies of users, kind of you know, inputting data into these these green screen terminals, and he they were replacing it with this Java based system, which in the no late nineties was relatively slow, was running in old do. browsers, but it it was the cool thing to do, and um, <laughs> and the users absolutely hated it because they were absolutely flying on this on this mainframe yeah, system yeah. It because it really because here's the socio technical <laughs> system again, yeah. again you're the the you're creating software for people who are adapted. Yeah. The, the people know how to use the mainframe. There's They have a relationship with that mainframe. There's there's relevant knowledge in their heads and yeah. you are, you're invalidating all of that. Yes. Yeah. And, you're, you're uh, and, like, and I, you know, I, we, we, we've moved on from those days, but I, I, I think even then it was harder than we probably, probably think. I, I think we've moved on a little bit, but, but I think, I, I think the, ch the, the change, the significant change is, is 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 what you mentioned in that largely we're, we're either gluing existing things together as you mm -hmm. say there's a lot of that going on or we're doing something genuinely new these days we, 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 there's there's less of that work of just translating old old you know paper processes because there aren't yes. many old paper processes there aren't as many yes. these days um so so that's different and it also means that to some extent certainly for the more innovative companies there's more there's even more ex exploratory work going on in terms of yeah. trying to figure out what the problem is to solve yeah yeah and the other thing is there used to be a a purpose for standalone software systems yes those those old the the first version of the mainframes and the yeah. java versions that replaced them could yeah. be useful by themselves with yes. very few interfaces just a few batch jobs that would ftp something over to I don't know, the check printer or whatever. Um, and that's not the case anymore. Um, our The software we write is mostly valuable in its integrations. Yes. So we're doing more. Yes, we're going to gather libraries. But um, I mean, what uh, it's, at Honeycomb, we do observability. And what good is observability until you can create the data in all these different languages and frameworks? hundreds and thousands of them and uh you need to integrate with aws and, you, and then you where do you put the data can you integrate with um i don't know people like grafana and um it, it's all about 
uh, where the software fits in with everything else in our lives mm -hmm. that we already have relationships with, that we already depend on. So yeah, it's the, the glue work is the value there, the connections. But the, the other aspect of the complexity that seems to me that we've we've we, we 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 have always struggled and continue to struggle to get to grips with is 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 this this bridge between um the technologists like us that build stuff and the people that have the problems that we that we you know that we're solving well one of the things that that you, I, i've i've read and i've seen you say in presentations and stuff um several times that, that resonate strongly with me because I've said very, very similar things um, is that our job is not to write code. Our job is to solve problems for people with software is the way that I tend to put it. That, that's what we're employed to do. We're, we're employed to try and produce things that bring value to people that they can use or do something you know. to provide valued capabilities our yeah. job is to provide valued capabilities to customers yeah. or internally to the business yes yes and, so now, and other people use those capabilities to solve problems we don't solve their problems either <laughs> okay okay so 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 so, so I, yeah, it's just I, still so like <laughs> i don't know egotistical or something to say i will solve your problems no, no, okay. I can provide you capabilities that you might then choose to use to solve your problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So, so, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that correction. Okay. So, so that, <laughs> so, 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 so we're we're working, you know, we're working to, you know, um, deliver something mm -hmm. that can help people, you know, yes, to, yes, to, to do whatever it is that they value. Um, yes. And that's yes. our job. And, it's and not that, the job that, of just, just writing software or right. You know, They're doing just... something that they value. Yes, and that's different from our values. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And, Such as good code. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that means that any and and you know the, the last thing is the kind of the the the, the 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 product thing. Nobody knows what they want. You know, the, you, there's the, you know, the, the 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 famous. Uh, the famous thing of Steve Jobs saying, you know, you know, how how are the people going to know know what what they want until we tell them? I, I think that's not <laughs> what, quite what I have in mind. But um, but 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 people don't, you know, even the people with the problems don't know what the what 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 okay. it is that they need to be able to solve the problems necessarily. So we've got oh, totally, so, so totally. our job is to is right. to kind of explore this problem yes. space and so we you know and show them discipline. something yeah yeah and 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 what people are really good at is saying no i don't like that or yeah i like that and then mm. so so this idea of being able That's to true. to to what i'm trying to get to i'm trying to get to one of my hobby horses which is that i think that our um our discipline is about essentially a process of guided evolution we need to structure a way of learning for all of us so that mm. we can explore the problem, find out possible solutions to the problem, try out the solutions, see whether they work or whether they don't, discard the ones that don't and you know, try and improve the ones that do. And we do this on this iterative cycle where we kind of grow some capability. And to me, all software works like that, if it works. I love, I love that phrase. We're trying to structure a way of learning. Yes. Oh. And, and I think that's, that's one of the cornerstones of what it is, that what our profession should be. We should become experts at learning in order to be able to mm -hmm. facilitate mm -hmm. this kind of, Right. Sorry, I, I can't think. I, I'm too old, old, old school. I can't think of a way of saying this other than problem solving. But you know, if you'll take oh. my caveat, but you'll, <laughs> but, 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 but you'll know what I mean. Oh well, yes. But see that that learning isn't just us. We're structuring oh, no, no, no. a way that other people can learn to solve their problems. Yes. And, and it gets back to what you said: people don't know what they want, right? Yeah. Uh, how would we? Um, we we don't know anything outside of the context in which we actively need it. So observability is a great example of this. Yes. For my current topic of of choice. Um, so 
uh, we're used to finding out what's going on in our software by looking at logs. And then we got graphs and we like graphs because they tell us when something's wrong. They can't tell us what is wrong. And we're used to going to look to the logs to try to decipher that. Um, Honeycomb's view of modern observability and, okay. Uh, also we coined the term or brought it into software. Um, uh, in order to say that there's something beyond logs and metrics. Whatever, the term doesn't belong to us. It's widened now. And logs and metrics are ways of seeing what's going on inside your software, so they count. Yeah. But there's something more than that, and there's an experience that if you've never had it, you don't know how much you need it. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, being able to go from the graph, click on an example, get a distributed trace, find the problem, see what's slow, ask, is this normal, get back to another graph. There's this way of navigating between the graphs and um, traces which are better than the logs. Um, that you, if you've never worked with distributed tracing and if you've never had that connection, if you've never been able to query any metric that you didn't previously label as a custom metric and pay for, um, you don't know what that experience is like and you don't know that you want to do that. Yes. Um, you don't know that uh, you could be solving these problems in 20 minutes instead of all day yes. uh, pouring over logs. Um, and so that's that's an example of of once you show this to people, then they can say, uh, how would I know to do that? Um, that, that I, I want to be able to zoom in. They can like give you the details uh, only in context. Yes. Um, how did that field get there? How can I add more uh, these what? Yeah, they, they can discover what they need in the work. I, I I I think I, I was smiling when you were saying that because 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 the, the phrase that was going through my head while you were saying that is I've used often in other contexts is that people don't know what good looks like and and we're that's true of all of us. We in, start in out programming contexts. not knowing what good looks like. When you start TDDing, it teaches you what good looks like. Yeah, because it makes your tests easy to write. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but the, but that, but the other thing that was going through in my head as you were describing that is that it was, it was, it was, it was funnily enough, it was reminding me of Florence Nightingale, the, the the famous nurse from the Crimea War, the lady with the, I don't know whether that's with an American. The, she theme. like created visualizations and she did. taught people to wash their hands. Yes, yes, but 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 nobody would listen to her about washing their hands until she mm -hmm. did this data visualization. So she invented right. a way of representing right. the data in terms of the mortality and the relationships that between to people. Which communicate you you can just you can you can still look at it. You can show the graph and you go, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> we can see what's going on. So that, that I've always been sort of interested in that idea of data visualization. Mm -hmm in order to liberate that kind of learning to be able to see things in different ways and it's the, the difficulty is it's often so contextual and so and so it's difficult to figure out how to gen generalize I'm, I'm interested in mm -hmm. the honeycomb thing in terms of mm. how that works in terms of trying to generalize that problem but but um but the but but that's always seemed, seemed like a, a, an interesting an interesting idea in terms of this trying to figure out better ways to you know, understand the problems. We spoke earlier about science. I'm, I'm a, I, I love Richard Feynman's way of describing problem solving, which is that you build these little kind of mental models in inside your head, and then you play you know, some behavior through the little mental model and see what pops out. And you, you test the model and you test the behavior. You know, in that way, David Deutsch, the the Oxford professor of physics, talks about um virtual reality as as his I my interpretation is his equivalent to the mental model we build virtual realities of things inside of our heads and we kind of manipulate them and play with them and you try and refine those over time so if in problem solving we're trying to establish these models these things 
that we can use. And then our job is to try and figure out ways of trying to realize some of those, some aspects of those in useful ways that people can use to enhance their own mental models. And so, so the ideas of the way in which we consume information and visualize it and display it is really quite deep in, term, in terms of our ability to learn and problem solve, it seems to me. Yes, yes. The the mental models thing, um, I'm reading some things about perception lately, human perception that uh, that moves beyond the idea that we have mental models. Um, but I think when we talk about software, the, the mental model concept is extremely useful uh, because we software is all, all about making decisions as developers. Mm -hmm. All we do all day is make decisions. Yes, sometimes we type them in, but that's the easy part. And if it takes too long to type them in, we automate something. Um, uh, but we're always making decisions and we make those not based on the reality of what the software is doing, but on our mental model of that. Um, and we build up that mental model by looking at code, um, by <laughs> looking at logs sometimes. And this is where a Honeycomb is big on testing and production, by which we mean your users are constantly testing in production. Are you looking at the results? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, so actually looking at what's going on in production, how much information can we make the software give us? Can we get it to teach us what's going on so that we can improve our mental models? Yes. And I think great software, at least some categories of great software, uh, does that for the people who use it. Um, like if you have uh, accounting software, if you're, if you're, entering an expense report well it happens that like categories are important for expenses because uh something something finance um <laughs> and the software can can uh provide me a list of categories that mean something to me and thus teach me um how to enter my expenses better mm -hmm. in ways that are useful to uh, other stakeholders like like the finance team um, so, so great software teaches stuff to the users, um, and like in a honeycomb, we totally are trying to get, get you an interface that teaches you about your software, um, which is, which is fun. It, you're right. So there's mental models on both sides. There's our mental model of our software. There's our user's mental model of whatever yeah. the domain is that our software, and that's where the complexity lies, the I, I think this is the Fred Brooks, Brooks meaning of essential complexity, the yes. domain complexity yes. that uh, expense reports. Actually, there's a lot to um, tracking expenses and reimbursing them and budgeting for them and uh, allocating. I don't know what all they do, but there's a lot to it that's in the software and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. when I enter that expense report. Yeah, and it's the, the, the core okay. domain, as, as Eric Evans would, would call it. Yes, yeah. yes. This is why um, domain-driven design is about let's get at that complexity and um, make that, not take it away, make it explicit yeah, yeah, and represent it in a way that lets the software not be, um, have separation of concerns and not be super, um, braided and intertwined. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Y so yeah. Models. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's um, models is such a loaded term and, and you, mm -hmm. you react, you reacted to it in a way that, that I don't think I meant, which, which is fine, mm. but it's, it's, it's a difficult term. When, and when it we're is. talking about it, but it, but I, it, it, it very much informs, the way that I approach software develop, de development mm -hmm. uh, in terms of I always I, I always have, have a model of that I'm updating all of the time as I go mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, but but kind of this is my current cut of, of what I think how I think this is working and what talks to what and under what circumstances yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's yeah. it's intentionally yeah I try and keep it a little bit fuzzy and a little bit vague because I don't want it to be too precise so it doesn't tie me down too closely but I've always got a direction of travel and and I see oh yeah some a direction code. of travel I like that I'm always thinking of the yeah. data flow yeah 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 so 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 the so so I I see some code that doesn't ob you know obviously have any direction of travel left you know there's there's just you know the the, the old big ball of mud where mm. you know people just tactically put stuff 
wherever it hap- wherever they happen to land at the time uh, uh, and and there's there there are there aren't and any class organizing a invokes principles. class b which calls back to class a and you're like no yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I i i i had a client <laughs> this is a sl- slightly different scale but i had a client it's a couple of years ago now but they had to build their build they had to run their build seven times before they got a, a viable output because of the circular dependencies in the build. Wow. <laughs> so I made their build seven times faster. <laughs> <laughs> they made their build seven times faster. But but uh, but but it's I I think I think it, I, I think that's one of the that's one of those other complexities in terms of what I perceive in in the good people that I've worked with, they've always got something like that, some 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 kind of something to steer by, some principles that they're going to adopt and apply. Yeah, because a big part of, of uh, having that mental model is questioning it. Yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. When it gets down to, okay, I think this service is going to call this service, and I think that API, um, uh, the the what it sends, the message is going to look something like this. Yeah. And then you go try it. And you find out and does it match? And if not, yeah. then you've learned something and you can refine your mental model. And we have to do this. This is development is learning. We have to do this mental model refinement all day long. Yes. Because, because we're not working on a single program in our laptop that we can understand the whole thing at once. We're working on a software system much bigger than us, being changed constantly by people who are not us. And we have to build the piece of the mental model we need to make the decision we're trying to make, to fix the bug, to implement the feature, whatever it is. Yes. We've got to refine and uh, make concrete the mental model of that piece of the system by testing the fuzzy one we already have. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. So, 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 so you're, you're doing a great job of helping me to sell my books. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so that's, that's, it's, that's kind of what the first part of my engineering book is 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 trying to say you 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 captured it really nicely i talk about this in terms of working experimentally and i i think that one mm-hmm, of the deep mm-hmm. one of the deep important aspects of being a software engineer a good developer you know whatever you want to call it is starting out assuming that you're probably wrong rather than starting out assuming that you're probably right Right. I'm gonna not. I, right. I'm gonna. I'm have gonna have a my falsifiable mental model. theory. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna start off with the assumption that I'm probably wrong. I've got, but I've got a theory. I've got, I've got a position. I've got a hypothesis of of what it is that I'm doing. This is this is the model that I hold right now. And then I'm gonna figure out if there's a way that I can show that the model's wrong. And I'm gonna try and do those things first, because if yeah. I can find my models wrong, that's the fastest route to learning. And this gets back to physics. Because yeah. that's the biggest thing I got out of studying physics in college that I apply to programming. Yes. Is that when you do an experiment, you change one thing at a time. Uh, yeah. You say what you think is going to happen, and then you find out whether it happens. Yes. Yes. And and, and and we can do that on the smallest scale. I, I do that when I do TDD. So when I when I write my, te- right, I write my right. test in TDD, and then mm-hmm. before I run it, I say, I expect this to fail, and it's going to fail with this error message. Yes, yes. Mm. I love pairing or sometimes streaming, because yes. I will say that out loud with my mouth, what yes. I expect to happen. Yes, and 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 that's a, that's a little tiny, lightweight experiment, and it mm-hmm. just organizes our thinking and allows us to make progress in smaller steps. Yes. Yeah, and then we cool. do those experiments at many levels. Um, yes. A REPL. A REPL will let you figure out what a particular line of code is going to do and confirm yep. that it does what you expect or see what error you get and what the message says. Um, yes. And then a unit test is kind of the next level. Execute this block of code and see if the results are, are what you wanted. Um, and then various levels of testing. And then in production, too. I think that in production, we never hit this line of code. Well, let me throw an exception in that line of code and see if we ever get it. Or or maybe I don't want to break it if we do hit this line of code. Maybe I just emit an event and then I can go looking for that. Yes. Yes. And 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 as you say, this this is so multi-layered and is happening. It's many people talk about 
you know software development as a complex adaptive system which is which i think mm-hmm. is exactly right it, you know you prod mm-hmm. it in one place and it it pops out in another and it's it's, it's a very difficult dynamic environment what, what, the, right that, you have to look for surprise at that yes. level yes and that i mean even at the level of testing something in the REPL or unit testing you're always looking for surprise yes yes and 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 also trying to predict some of the ways in which your you know your idea you know if this is my model how can my model screw up <laughs> how right. could this go we wrong we want to form expectations and form yeah. concrete expectations so that we can notice when they're violated yeah yeah uh, absolutely and and uh, and always kind of coming up with those little tiny hypotheses and and the little tests that we can mm-hmm. we can try to to figure out whether you know yeah. whether and then the, right the big ones the wrong one. Yeah. I think people will get uh, 403 errors just randomly because network problems happen. Yeah. Um, and then I can go look at the 403 errors that happen in production and say, are they random? And it, um, my my graph might say, oh, actually, they happen a lot more often in Canada. And and then you can ask why, and you can mm-hmm. dig into that. Yes. Um, looking for surprise. Uh, teaches you stuff about the system that you didn't know you needed to know. The other part of that, that it seems to me is if we are to try and figure out how to become more expert at learning, then, you know, there are some of these kind of guide rails. So we talk about experimentation. We talk about working incrementally. We th- mm-hmm. talked about, you know, having a theory and, you know, th- th- those sorts of things and, and making progress in small steps. The other part, the other part that you mentioned that I think is absolutely central. I, I and I think you use these terms. I can't remember what you, exactly what you said, but in my head, what you said was control the variables. You make a chat, you know, one change at a time, and mm. you control the variable sufficiently so that you can understand the impact of that change. Um, I, I remember at one point um, in one of the places where I worked, we had a production incident and we'd got a new guy who joined the team who... Oh, new come, people ask the best questions. Yeah, he'd come straight off doing um, some postdoc work uh, mm. in, in, in academia, in, in chemistry. But, but but using lots of computation and and so he, he was very good but he was brilliant at the silent kind of scientific method stuff he was and we you know we didn't know this at the time we I knew I'd interviewed him but we didn't know how that would play out so we were in the middle of this kind of you know sort of emergency situation in our incident room trying to figure out what was going on and we were going on like this and he was just sort of sat in the corner just quietly taking notes and I was thinking is he paying attention is he just doodling or is he you know is he okay and well, i didn't say anything we were in the height of you know trying to figure out things like this and at some point somebody said oh it could be this and he said no it can't be that because you said this earlier on because he'd been taking wow. notes he'd been making wow. sure in the small steps and just following the line of reasoning that we were taking and just making sure that we could build a consistent model. We could build a model wow, nice. of what's going on and, and understanding what's, you know. And again, you know, I, I think of that as, you know, one of the things that we can do. And one of the things that we can do is that we can use software to do some of that for us. Build a consistent model? Uh, work in incremental steps that validate the steps. I think it's one of the things, it's one of the things that I like about test driven development again, mm, is that we, mm-hmm, we, mm-hmm. we evolve the system, small change by small change, building on stuff yeah. that we know that works because we validated it. It's, this goes back to this idea of the, oh, of the yeah. model in terms of the consistency of the model and being able to, what we can do is we can kind of have an automatic validation of a fit with the model. If we can realize the model in software some way. Oh, oh, and that gets into formal verification. A lightweight version of it, which is what I think that test driven development mm. gives you. Okay, and and I think type systems are also type systems are another form of that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Because you can describe what you think you have and let the compiler say, oh, you, "You don't have exactly that." Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And 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 that gives you the uh, you know the earliest possible feedback which is another another way for optimizing for learning to make sure that we get feedback sooner yeah yeah i particularly like gradual types yes um where where you can add those assertions uh when you're ready to make them or when you think you need them um and not be not be tied to solving the puzzle of make the compiler happy yeah (laughs) i i i've 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 not 
most of my career uh, of building real software was spent in statically typed languages. Mm -hmm. I've done a fair bit in in other languages. I I, I use Python for small things, and you know I've done mm -hmm. stuff in JavaScript and tiny bits of Ruby and things. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but I I I I must confess, I I like I like typing i've not tried a language that supports gradual typing I, th I think it's the best of both yeah because like in ruby while i'm writing a program that's small and on my computer and fits in my head it's great that i don't have to declare types yeah and i don't have to satisfy the compiler because my mistakes are small enough and local enough that i i just fix them and it's yeah. nice and it's elegant and it's cute uh but when I come to someone else's Ruby code, I hate it. I hate it. Yes. I hate looking at someone else's Ruby code. Yes. <laughs> Especially if it doesn't have tests because it doesn't have types. And I don't know what this argument is. And I don't know what I'm trying to return. Yes. Um, and and then your tools can't help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And it nothing can tell me. Ah, it's, and you have to go read the code and read more code. Yeah. And hold all that in your head. Oh, no, just put it in the types, please. That's why I love TypeScript. Yes. I love TypeScript. I turn all the strictness off yeah. um, when I'm writing code. Um, for shared code bases, uh, some mm -hmm. strictness is useful, but I can also turn it off uh, while I'm messing around and playing with it until I find the shape that I want. And then I can state the shape that I want. And then everyone yeah. else can come to it and see the shape that it has. Yeah. 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 And, and that, that's the speed of feedback that you get with 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 with, with a type model in you know in, in the software you know you, you can get your comp you know right I, it's, it's my, right there in the red squigglies idea, yeah my my idea gives me a red <laughs> squiggly line when i've screwed something up i love that that's that's brilliant yeah and sometimes it'll fix it for me <laughs> that's it indeed <laughs> or, or or suggest alternatives uh, yeah that's really yeah. nice uh there's something i wanted to say about the scientific method yes um, incredibly important. It's important at all levels of software. Use it when you're programming and also use it when you're troubleshooting uh, complex software systems that are interacting with everything. Yes. But don't use it with people. You cannot control the barrier variables. You cannot perform a repeated experiment or a controlled, randomized controlled trial um, with software teams. It, it's not a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it only barely works with humans at all in medicine, and that only because of tens of thousands of people involved. Um, we have the team we have, and we're inside it. We're inside the system. And that takes a completely different kind of experimentation. Mm -hmm. And the social sciences, um, the term is grounded theory, or one term, where we start with questions, and then we gather data, and we look at all the data together and like, notice patterns in it and get to better questions and then go back and figure it out. Um, and this is what we can do in our retrospectives. This is what we mm -hmm. can do as, as I want to say as managers, but only in the sense that managers have um, noticed what's happening in the system and try to make it better in their job description. Really everyone can do this. Yes. Um, is is look at what's happening between the people in the software um, and then make it better and then notice if it makes a difference. Don't expect to measure a difference. Notice, just look for people saying, oh yeah, I saw this uh, error message and I knew exactly what to do. Um, good job, your error message helped. So, so, I, I I I agree with what you with what you're saying uh, yet again, <laughs> but I want I, I want to dig in a little bit uh, in, in term in, in and explore that idea. So um, so if we are if we're working on these things and we're looking for ways to improve whatever it is that we're doing you know we build better products work more more effectively build higher quality software more efficiently whatever it is okay. that we want to do in that kind that kind of social side of the problem the, the people side of the problem which is the hard part yeah you know, yeah um how what are the tools and techniques that allow us to 
I'm assuming that you're not saying, you, you know, you, you, you don't apply the scientific method, but you're still interested right. in science and evidence and those sorts of things in order to make decisions. Yeah, you you're just got to be, it's like... just so much more difficult to interpret the results. You can't control the variables. Right, right, right. The results are better questions. Yeah. Um, And so you still want to like notice your expectations, question them, look for surprise. Surprise is always your friend if you're open to it. Start off assuming that you're wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, and this is where like sometimes I have books about this that I haven't read yet. <laughs> <laughs> This is the social science of oh, owning the book. Owning the books the doesn't question. count. <laughs> it it does. Well, I read chapter one, <laughs> um, and it does count. Like knowing that the concept exists and knowing what to Google when I yes, it does. Yes, it does. Learn more. Um, yeah, today I was reading something about conceptual inquiry, uh, which is about digging into finding out how to how do people work. Like what capabilities do they have and need? Um, and you have to get them in context for that. Because if you ask people how they work, they'll summarize it like you and I are doing now, talking about yes. programming. But if you really want to learn what to do and how to make it better, you have to dig into the details. This is where ensemble programming and pair programming are really good uh, at transferring um, transferring how to do this work. Uh, methods and concepts and those mental models of the, the particular software uh, they they transfer um, and we learn from each other when we're doing the work together when we're changing the software together you have to get super concrete with it can we get a bit more concrete with this can we can we can we come up with uh, an example of um a problem that we might face and how we would solve it so um, good idea. i don't know if you if, i don't know if you've got one i'm i'm just nervous that we're talking we're you know, speaking abstractly about abs abstractions abstract. yes which is very tempting and enjoyable and also not nearly as communicative as you think it is <laughs> indeed <laughs> <laughs> indeed so, um <laughs> so as a new developer there's mm -hmm. a lot of examples of this uh and, and not just not only new, but new to a team. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a concrete example. I was playing with trywilco.com the other day. Okay. And this is a, a website that's about uh, do programming challenges, except they're, they're not like toy programming challenges. They're make a change in existing software in the context of a team. Mm -hmm. So like really realistic development experience. Um, there's not real people. The people are chatbots. Um. And, but the, the manager says, okay, here, fix this bug. I created an issue for it. Uh, the issue says, um, yeah, yeah, when creating an item, people are seeing a broken image and we want them to see a placeholder instead if they didn't put an image. Uh, and I am like, I'm, I'm approaching the system. I have cloned the repository and I have Docker composed up and I can, and I have created an account in my local version of their little marketplace. Um, and I'm like, what does create a new item mean? I, I don't know. What is this this placeholder you're talking about? And there's like, click here for more information. And clicking here took me to a page about something about um, uh, partial data. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I did not want an abstraction. What the F is create new item in this context? <laughs> Um, and this is where I really need to sit with someone because if we were sitting together yeah, and they said, oh yeah, when you create a new item and I'm like, oh, can you show me how to create a new item? And they mm -hmm. would show me and I would be able to do it. And then I would say, okay, where is that in the code? And probably they'd show me, but directly because they know, but it would be even better if they showed me how to find that in the code. Um, but when they show me in the code, I would like, I, I can say, how would you find that? How do you know it's there? And they can say, oh, I search, I, I can search for this, um, what do you call it in React? The the event, the event name. Um, and then I can see where that is emitted and I can see where that came from. And, um, and, and it's only when you're doing the work together that you can ask questions to get to that level of detail mm -hmm. um, and, and find out what's going on. 
yeah. So, so, um, I, I can sort of recommend trywilco.com if you want to like show someone what it's like to be a software developer and see if they like can even conceive of the level of patience needed. Because when you do figure out how to create a new item, then you have to get past another bug in the validation before you can even duplicate the one that you're supposed to fix. Typical, so mm -hmm. normal. Um, <laughs> but also it's a it's a really complicated scenario that they're implementing and it, it has its own bugs yeah yeah ex expect expect to be really frustrated <laughs> <laughs> but it's realistic so 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 it, so it, it, in a real situation so so i i think i think we say I'm trying. I'm try I, so this is just my want, I suppose. I, I'm trying to figure out what the what the underlying principles are, and the best that I can do it. <laughs> uh, the best that I can do at the moment is that going back to something that we said earlier is that this is a socio technical thing. We need to collaborate, and we need people. People with will have different knowledge, different experience, different contexts. Mm -hmm. And we need all of those things in order to be able to do a good job. One of the, one of the, I, 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 I like, I want to ask you this question, but I, I quite like the state of DevOps reports results. And one of the findings of the state of DevOps report is that one of the biggest predictors of high performance on their scores is that the team has the ability to make its own choices on design or mm, process mm -hmm. or anything else because they have the context coordinating but they also the... they've got but also it means they've got the skills the, 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 you know the they've got the, the enough of the skills represented in the people oh, in the team right. to be able to turn to your mate and say i don't know what create item means yeah <clears throat> yeah they have the context that they need and um, when they do the architecture and the design, then they have the architecture and design skills. And architecture, um, you can talk about it all you want, but the actual architecture is in the code. Yeah. And if if the people writing the code aren't involved in those architecture decisions so that they really understand them and are a part of them, your architecture is a fantasy. Yeah. And 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 however brilliant it is in your ivory tower, it won't be what you're having in the code. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. So one of the principles is get into the details. Yes. Go down really, and if you are like, if you are an architect and you're trying to understand the system broadly, you won't be able to go down into every detail. Go down into some of them. Yes. Yeah. Sit and see some real problems that happen, and then look for patterns in the details. Yes. Yeah, not I, in the summaries. I, 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 absolutely. I, I, I used to. I used to work for ThoughtWorks many years ago, and um, I was I was sometimes called one of their kind of you know lead or principal architects on different projects or something like that. And ThoughtWorks kind of constitutionally didn't like the term architect very much mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we didn't exactly the kind of reason it that you're talking the about. It, it kind of there's a risk that it implies the ivory tower. But one of the things, that I, but I think architecture is deeply important but it's a practical thing and yes. if the people that are thinking i think everybody should be thinking about architecture everybody should be thinking about design everybody should be thinking about coding because mm -hmm. they're all one to me they're just different re resolutions of detail of the same mm, problem yes, yes. And, and it's so, hard to think about them all at once and you, and, and but that's one where of the, ensemble programming really helps you can have yes, different people thinking absolutely. at different layers yeah. Yes, and 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 they bring that 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 collective viewpoint, and mm -hmm. and you can rely on different people. And if you haven't got that, you need people that are able to do that jump between the different yeah, levels is, of thinking. Oh, which is, hard. Which, yes, and those those people those people are unusual. That the mm -hmm. ability to zoom in and zoom out, and you know, maintain the focus on we're going over there, and this is the big picture, and this is the, this this twiddly detail right now in front of me. But you've got the people that are working in the big picture must, must have that ability to be able to get down to whatever level of detail is necessary in mm -hmm. any given area of the problem, it seems to me. Right. Yeah. And that gets mm -hmm. back to the learning of you can't have that level of detail everywhere. You need to be able to acquire it. Yes. Distributed yes. tracing helps a lot with that because where do I need to dig in? Oh, right here. Let me go search for that trace name in the code and find the. Yes. 
And, and, and I, 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 I relearn this problem over and over and over again. I, I, I've just recorded a video, which will be out in a couple of weeks, about um, about the grungy parts of software development. I, I, I have a, I have a silly thing. I'm trying to inter- I'm trying to do some OAuth integration between two two third party bits of software. Integration is the important part, and it's the hard part. Yeah, yeah, and it's just it's they're, they're technologies that I'm not terribly familiar with, and it's a bit mm-hmm. annoying. And there's this kind of a magic incantation. We're doing something that's unusual for the. I bits read of the spec at one point, but it's been years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's all <laughs> that kind of stuff, and it's I, I started off thinking, oh, this is easy, and that then was got always to the point, a mistake. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then got to the point. Okay, now I need to be more disciplined. And now I need to start going through. And as soon as I started organizing my thinking and just pulling back to the stuff that I know how to do of solving the problems, that, you know, focusing on the learning that we've been talking about, everything became easier. And I still haven't solved the problem yet, but I know how we're going to solve it. We are now inches away from solving it because I know where we are now in the problem. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, so it's um, yeah. You had uh, to zoom out, get an understanding yeah, yeah. of the the wider yeah yeah landscape of OAuth, yeah, and then you can get back into the details of your own code. Yeah, 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 and 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 that's that seems that's another one of these you know difficulties of you know we, we're all these kind of yeah. so <laughs> there's the opposite principle when you have a small problem sometimes you need to zoom out yes and then zoom back in and. And uh, we've been talking about when you have a big problem like architecture you or improving your team, um, smoothing the flow of work in your team, you need to get down into the details. Yes. Not every detail, a random set is useful. Yes. Um, domain-driven design, uh, when, when I'm teaching with Eric Evans, he is so repetitive about getting a concrete example. Yes. We need concrete examples with specific... Uh, values and specific people are doing very specific things, yes. not summaries, not generalizations. Yes, um, yes, e- exactly. And and I, th- that's one of my. I, I talk about that a lot in when I'm coaching people in the sense when I'm talking about testing. So you know, I'm trying to introduce acceptance testing. Usually, mm. this this is where this crops up mm. is. You know, so often, and and I think that's really about the requirements process. So often, the requirements process is trying to is really trying to define a solution, and that's not mm. what you want. You want it to express the problems, and then you want the mm-hmm. to test concrete examples. What are the mm-hmm. examples that would demonstrate that this behavior that you want of your system exists in the system? Yeah, it's that's a what story. You want. I mean, it's it can a be a boring story, but it's a story. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> they're not riveting. It's not John Steinbeck, right. but they are stories. <laughs> you know, so 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 absolutely, I I, I think I think that's. Um, it, it 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 amuses. I, I I love these kinds of ideas that crop up all over the place because I think that's saying something deep about those ideas. I think it's saying something oh, that right. these right. are the tools of our profession. These are the these are the tools that we should become good at dealing with and good at manipulating. These these mental tools, I mean. So right. in terms of, right. in terms of you know working experimentally, but you know focusing on learning, gathering feedback, using ex- concrete examples, all of these kinds of things are the tools of our trade that allow us to build better systems. It seems to me, and you know collaborating in ways where we can, you know, we can interact with people and say, hey, I don't know about what. Well, how do, how do we solve this problem? You know, and have that conversation with people. Yeah, yeah. Because the conversation, when you have a conversation with people, it brings them in. Yes. And then they are part of the solution too. And that's that's how we collaborate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and our software is coherent when we have coherence. Yes. And and the the best the the best I, I've been fortunate to work on on uh, no more than a handful, really, uh, but, uh, but a handful of genuinely great teams, I think, from my perspective, anyway, over the course of my career. That's and when, how we get good. Yeah. And and that's, you know, and it's it's a delight when, you, when you're just able to, to, to have those conversations, those conversations, those ideas, and you all learn, you all learn in loads of different ways and lots of different things, different things. Every, did you know this hot, 
hotkey setting in, you know, in, in IntelliJ <laughs> IDEA or 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 de- what, this piece of code that you, that I haven't worked in before I can work with somebody who has or whatever it is and, and I think that's part of the joy yeah. of or it what me. does that name mean I don't understand yeah, oh yeah. you're right that's yeah. not a good name what should we call it yeah 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 <laughs> that used to be a lot bigger problem before the tours got better <laughs> mm, renaming <laughs> yeah yeah it oh used yeah to be that horrible used to be cost. work yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we should probably, this is probably a good time to start thinking about wrapping up. It's been a delightful conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Likewise. And your Thank insights. You so I've much. really, I'm really enjoyed thrilled it. to be here. Oh, it's, 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 it's been fantastic. Um, it, for everybody that's listening, um, we'll put some links to, uh, to Jessica's stuff in the links below so you can kind of find out more about what she's doing what she's working on and so on um if you're interested in supporting the channel head over to patreon and look for continuous delivery we'll put links to that below as well and thanks again to our sponsors equal experts and thank you for watching join us in the conversation in the in the the, uh, the comments sections below thank you thank Bye-bye. you